Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay like this. I would need a computer. You got and it. Yeah, I would need some. I will try to be very fast, but I would need some more minutes. Take to time. <laughs> uh, and the mouse. Thank you. Uh, because it's maybe, it's maybe a bit uh, uh, more complicated. I'm a net artist and I uh, started uh, to work online in uh, 1995 and at this moment animated GIFs were really very big. Yeah? But there would never be a panel about them on any uh, online culture conference or any internet art event. Um, and uh, also, what else I do? I write about digital folklore, I write about vernacular web, I teach, and I'm an animated GIF model myself. So animated GIFs, they're really a big uh, part of my professional life and also my personal life. Uh, though I should say, I didn't, uh, I, me myself, I made, I made only a few myself, yeah, only a few animated GIFs. And uh, mm, here you can see, uh, the first one, made in 1996, uh, it was a, a part of the, my early project, My Boyfriend Came Back From The War. Uh, it was not an important part of the project. I made this GIF not to make a GIF. Uh, I made it because I need some subtle movement uh, in one of the corners, and it was the only animated GIF. GIF was the only uh, format that would provide, um, provide this effect. Um, then, um, in my later projects that were also net stories or web films, as they were called, I um, later tried, uh, I tended to uh, avoid the use of animated GIFs, uh, though I was very much interested in the movement and the moving image, but I wanted to be even more browser specific. You know, the net artists, uh, the challenge was to be as medium specific as possible. So if you are working for the browser, then go to the limits. Then maybe not even animated GIFs, but make animation with scrolling, with reloading pages, uh, with uh, scripts, or with things like this, uh, you know, uh, moving the frames. I don't know if you remember frames. It's also <laughs> something uh, uh, <laughs> from that time. Okay, so in, my, in the 90s, in my artistic practice, uh, gifts were sort of uh, the subject I also didn't want to touch, but then the things really changed around 99 and 2000 that I started to uh, teach. I had a group of web design students and um, uh, I was supposed to teach them web design, but mostly we were dealing with uh, uh, user culture it was the main topic and imagine I want to uh, show to them what uh, internet is around, what's the, what people are doing on the web, what people did on the web before professional web designers came. And uh, things I want to show, they really, they very swiftly disappear at that moment. I mean things like this, like the star background, yeah? Can you see the uh, flickering? So the type of the GIF that would be very mm, important at that time because people made their pages uh, with star backgrounds was a big thing. Uh, then uh, the Dancing Girl was uh, also, you know, you couldn't less and less, lo uh, let me put it like this, she was almost on every page yeah, in 97. And then there's, I, ha I can hardly find her anywhere. So the things like this started to occur to me. I started to be more conscious about them. I started to collect the gifts. I started to write about them, uh, but of course, also, the uh, <laughs> idea was to bring them back, yeah, back to the web. To, um, so I started to use them in my art projects. So then we started the period around five years, then my every work was appropriation and uh, uh, using of the gifts I found in free collections. Um, this is what you see here now. This screen, it was made in 2008, and this is one of uh, nine online newspapers. This series started in 2004. We made it together with my partner, Dragon Espinshit. Um, <coughs> and this, uh, the idea here was to, it's a fictional project. The idea was to imagine how online newspapers would look today 
if the standard for online newspapers uh, would be established, would be established, been established in 1999, not in 1999, but let's say in 1996. Yeah, of course, then they would be full of animated gifs, something like that. Uh, that what I showed to you uh, here now, uh, mostly not to show this um, project of mine, but to attract your attention to the gifs, what you can see here. Uh, I think you immediately can see the difference to the usual gifs of today. And the difference is, yeah, it's, <coughs> it's shouting, it's very uh, clear. There is a transparent background. Uh, they, the transparency here, play even more important role than the loop. Uh, why, why they were made transparent? Because um, the idea was that if I make an animated GIF for my page, I made it for other pages as well. It is to appear on other pages, it's to look good on other pages of the internet. So these were GIFs for sharing, but not only for sharing, but for being part of the of web pages. Yeah, they had to look, they had opportunity to look good on each of them, of whatever page, whatever background. Um, <coughs> uh, here, these uh, elements, they're more like decoration elements. Uh, I he have here another project where Dragon and me, we made a tribute to the navigation elements users were creating themselves. Uh, this is a uh, um, uh, Google Maps navigation bar, but if I start to scroll, uh, I'm not uh, zooming in or zooming out, I'm revealing the predecessors of the navigation bar. Yeah, the graphics that users were making to replace navigation bar of the browser and um, things like this. Um, so there are a lot of projects like this, what we made, uh, trying to bring uh, star backgrounds to the foreground, trying to bring animated GIFs to the foreground, um, um, and here is something maybe I should mention now, that uh, of course at that time there were already GIFs that would be like more, si more similar to um, today's ones, uh, the ones that would be like a video sequence, yeah, to show in the, um, some video sequence, and, but mostly they were in, at the porno sites, yeah, there they were the main content. Outside of the porno, um, industry, they were appearing very, very seldomly because they were still very big. You know this small uh, GIF here, it's 93 kilobytes. Uh, this is how it looks now on YouTube. And uh, the author of the page where it appears had to make the starting uh, static image. So only if you want, you would start this animation. Yeah, but you as a user wouldn't, wouldn't be abused with such a huge 93 kilobytes um, animation. Okay, this is, um, uh, yeah, but then there is a, just some more minutes. Um, do I have more tabs opened? Um, there is an interesting period that started around 2004 in animated GIFs, uh, so-called MySpace period, you can say, um, <coughs> just the beginning of the Pimp My Profile networks. It's the moment when people s stopped to use web pages, um, but started to make profiles, and then the glittering graphics were very, started to be very important. And here I have a comparison gallery of uh, famous animated GIFs, and there, are, there are, let's say, 2004, 2005, um, born 2004, 2005, younger sisters and brothers. Um, I recently, yeah, so here we are, for example. Um, I recently, um, how to make it visible? Scroll. I need to scroll to the. Hmm. Okay, I can show to you. Yeah, great, you can see. Uh, they try to make the uh, timeline, of course it's very re reduced one, and a lot of things are not inside, but here you can see the, how the um, 
timeline, how, the, how all this was developing from the transparent tiny girls that were making a very funny but really animated moves. Mm -hmm. You can see that the way she is moving uh, her legs, it's uh, against any anatomy <laughs> logic. <laughs> uh, and then the period then things are not moving at all but glittering, yeah, and mm -hmm. making uh, and um, uh, getting much bigger. And this, you know, uh, this, what you mentioned, the perfect loops, beautiful loops. There is an alternative history in red. Also the animated goes some crazy effect, but in fact everything is static, and the scene from the film. Uh, now I'm coming to the end. So after appropriating so many things, after working with the content other people produced, I of course wanted to give something back, and uh, I made myself, actually it's our project together we made with Dragon, we made me an animated GIF model. Uh, I never wanted to be a uh, meme, and it's around 2005, mm -hmm. when meme were in general not the topics um, at all. Uh, but I was aiming for immortality, one can <laughs> say, yeah? And uh, assuming that if I am a perfect GIF, perfect meaning perfect transparency and beautiful loop, then I will be used on a lot of pages, not profiles, not tumblers, not blogs, but really pages people make themselves. And this will, mm, this is how I will live forever. <laughs> um, now with the image search, uh, I could find out that um, in fact uh, it worked. I am spread um, around the web. Again, these are not the uh, blogs, this is not Tumblr, but the uh, pictures where I just, I fit to the context, yeah, uh, to the content of the page. Uh, my, um, my only, the last, yeah. uh, somebody also uh, took this image and uh, scaled it up and uh, made the, put me on the uh, white background. And this is how I entered the tum Tumblr culture and uh, yeah, have some spins there. Thank you. So just to sort of kick things off before we open it up for questions, I did have a couple for you guys. Um, and uh, I'd just like to talk about favorites for a second. Do um, you guys have a favorite GIF, or maybe just thinking a little bit more broadly in terms of just somebody who inspires you, a GIF artist? Um, I'd like to hear a little bit, you know, just GIF-wise, what you guys like. Um, I don't know, you guys want to start at the end, or? Cool. All right, awesome. Um, well, I guess, uh, if I had to sort of pick a favorite, I would go with this guy, David Dope, on, who's on Tumblr. I think we have his website up. It's dvdp.tumblr.com. And he's this guy, he's like a motion graphics artist, and he makes these amazing, seamlessly looping, mostly black and white GIFs, which we'll see on the screen in any moment now. Yeah. So he, yeah, if you want to just keep on scrolling down. Um, Tumblr's file size limit on GIFs, well, it used to be 500 kilobytes, and it recently got bumped up to a meg. And this guy, uh, in addition to just being an amazing image maker and animator, has so, like this amazing ability to sort of deal with those constraints, um, and somehow like understands the compression scheme in this amazing way, where he can just like fit so much stuff in whatever file size he's constrained to. So I think he's like virtuosic on several different levels. Um, because you know he makes these amazing gifts that you can't sort of like identify any starting point and ending point with a lot of different kinds of motion happening, um, but he keeps it under these file size constraints that um, you know stuff like this shouldn't really be possible. 
<laughs> um, and he's just like super prolific too. So if you're on Tumblr, I would recommend following this guy. He's, I think he's the best. And uh, you know, his stuff does really well too, as far as the, the Tumblr notes currency goes. <laughs> and so I'm not, I consider myself pretty bad at Tumblr. Um, I'm on there, but um, so I just sort of as an experiment, I decided to kind of try to make a GIF that was sort of in the style of DVDP, and uh, so that was that was my attempt. It's not really like the same kind of fluidity as what he does. It's sort of more born from like what I kind of do, but um, but somehow my DVDP impression managed to get like more notes than I've ever gotten before on Tumblr. Like something like, yeah, like a lot, I don't know. <laughs> Not as much as his regularly do, but um, there's something about what he's doing that I think taps into something um, that people really want to see. And I don't know, I guess I'm, I really like these sort of seamless loops that you can kind of just like stare at and zone out to for a long time. That's, that's just a personal taste thing. Yeah.